What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Clock Radio Speakers. I am your co-host, Armand Wake Up. Follow me on all social media. Don't follow me on all social media. Like, follow him on all social media. Nah, man. Just follow me on like Instagram. Subscribe to me on YouTube. There you there go. There you go. At Armand Wake go. Up. Um, more important than that, uh, follow. Where do you? Where should we tell people to follow us on social media? Because like, I, like I'm the I'm the resident content guy. Yeah, but like, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. You know, our engagement is 98% through Patreon. You know, if you're a fan of the show, if you listen, but you haven't already dipped your toe into the Patreon waters, come on in. You know what I'm saying? Patreon.com slash CRS podcast. But other than that, I mean, the problem is, is like, you know, we've said it before. Twitter is like, it's not even slowly dying. It's just like dying in like weird ways. You know, like. It's a cesspool. Yeah. And honestly, like everything to do with this, you know, with the terrible like war that's happening right now mm -hmm. in, in Israel and Palestine, like it's just like go on, go on Twitter. Like for you is now just out. Of, like, no, you just can't. It was bad before. Now it's like stay away. Awful. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mine's not that. Mine's not that bad. It's well, not see, really a whole lot of Israel, Palestine stuff on my, on my, on my for you feed. It's not that mm -hmm. bad. Um, It's just Instagram. a lot of. Yeah. 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 My for you is like just a, just a bunch of really bad Drake takes terrible drake takes mm. like projecting drake takes takes that project but we'll get mm. there we're gonna have a lot of drake takes in this show yeah probably yeah probably. you know it's but coming we're, but it's us you know what i'm saying it's us who else but us um yeah i don't know yeah just follow the pages or just join the patreon it's five dollars man it's five dollars a month it's well worth it ask all of the people we keep about a solid 80 to 100 people who come in and out ask them yeah and the ones that are here our patreon community i say like out of that maybe like there's a solid 80 to 85 i think they're lifers unless we so. just unless we just go like like just left armand and i start doing diss tracks towards one another you know, if we just put like Trump Pence 2024, like along the side or something like we just just go super crazy. I think our, our, our and I think that says something that's a testament to our voice and who we are. We we won't disappoint you. We're not here to engagement farm. We're not. No, I don't like doing it. It's corny. We, we probably we've almost certainly left money on the table. Ah. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe. Yeah. Maybe, but how Maybe. much? Would yeah. would you want a big check or do you want the consistent Patreon that comes in? Listen, man, I grew up in the '90s. I, you know, we get it's like we were obsessed with keeping it real. Like, what can I say? Right, that's true. Kids don't know anything about that. That's Keep dead. Real, no. that's dead. No engagement troll. Come up, come up. Just make it. Just, just get make the a, bag. Just make a make a fake account and just say whatever. Yeah. And pay thirteen dollars. Okay, whatever, whatever, All right, man. whatever. Join us on Patreon. You can subscribe to the YouTube. That's cool. I'm building that up. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, gonna be you know a lot easier to get this video out now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm here. Doc's here. Hey, what's up? Um, we just we were just here. We were so we like were just here. We you know we talked welcome about back. a yeah welcome back. Um, we we're talking about Kanye and you know all the music of his that leaked. We talked about um. Nas, I am getting reissued. What else did we talk about last episode? Talk about all we just um, caught up, all bunch of stuff. Yeah, you know? bunch of stuff, man. Just good episodes. So check check us out. But today, yes, sir. <sighs> You're man. We've we've been around. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we've been around for every one of these albums. Mm. Every one. I think the only Drake project that we did not review when it first came out was. So far gone, right? And to, and thank me later. Oh, we we didn't do thank me later. No, because we we didn't really we didn't start the the regular shows until 2011. So okay, so take care was the first one. Yep. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. That's most of them. Yeah, most of them. But That's I most mean, of them. as fans, we you know we've been around for a long time. For sure. For sure. So I think Doc, Doc and I is, is is weird. Like when you really think about like reoccurring consistent characters or artists who show up that we talk about at length yeah um, drake is one of those artists um i mean you're right so his run is now 14 years basically yeah uh, well, right? 15 because he said things get kinky 
I think he's being generous. I don't think he was dominating anything in 2008, but um, I don't think I mean, most people he, even knew who he was in 2008. He had replacement girl on 106 in part. I'm sure that Birdman Paolo really helped out with that. So <laughs> I saw he was talking reckless on social this week, too. He was. <laughs> listen, listen, for somebody to be washed up, like, no, whatever, we'll get there. We'll get there. So, yeah, so we, we've, we've reviewed tons of Drake uh, material on, yep. on this on the show before. Um, we've heard basically every Drake song you, you can possibly imagine. And and here we are. We are back again. It's been a interesting rollout for him. Um, a little different. A little different. A little different. You know, most of the time you do the tour. You do the album to set up the tour. Yeah. He kind of did the tour bridging between her loss and this album mm-hmm. to his detriment because he was canceling tour dates so he could finish this project up. Yeah. 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 Shout Which out to you Columbus. Don't, you don't really see that often. Like... I've never seen it. That's a risky move. That's a real, like you're like paying. It's not because like a lot of times, you know, you'll see people are canceling tour dates because they're not selling out or whatever. Like Drake was not having that problem. No. So talk about leaving money on the table. Definitely left money on the table. Which is interesting because yes, Drake's making more money than your average person on streams, obviously, but he's Mm -hmm. making a ton of money off tour. Mm Mm-hmm kind of a weird business decision to cancel tour dates to finish an album so do you think backwards so do you think that has anything to do with news excuse me um news that he's sick not doing well um rumors about his stomach right yeah well the rumor is is that he needs to go to rehab um because he has a a a lean and and coke addiction that's the rumor. you think yeah, that's you think the he's got some he listen, he's on he's I mean he, he just listen to this album. Listen. Right? He's not a man who seems like he is locked in on his life right now. Yeah. That's a kind and generous way of putting it. We're gonna Absolutely. talk in more detail. Yeah, for sure. You know, without for trying sure. to judge too much. For sure. I'll well, we'll judge a little bit. Nah, <laughs> I ain't judging though. He ain't on trial. There you go. There you go. He ain't on he ain't on trial with me. But with that, yeah. um, this album uh, for for all the dogs, for all the dogs, yeah, not some, all of you them. You know, I think this album is misnamed, or more importantly, I think people misunderstood what this album was supposed to be when there it was announced. There you go. There you go. You know me. The onus has there has to be some onus on the audience, on the crowd, and the audience I, never accepts responsibility for their I, role in. You know, I think dogs. I think words are tricky. Words can have multiple meanings. For sure. And I think a lot of Drake's male fans saw the, heard the title For All the Dogs and they said, he's making the album for the guys that we want to hear. Is I think what mm-hmm. people internalize that as. Mm-hmm. What this album makes very clearly, makes very clear, is that this is an album for all the dogs, meaning men who dog women. Mm-hmm. Like that's literally who this album is for. He makes it clear on every single song. And I think people were, I think people were just 100% not expecting that for some reason, despite everything that he has shown us over the past five years or whatever, you know, however many years you want to say, you know what I mean? Like, and if you yeah. would have listened to clock radio speakers, hmm. when this like was announced, like our listeners, yeah, well, not y'all, not y'all, y'all cool. Sure. I'm about, I'm about everybody them. else, everybody yeah, else. Sure. I'm not talking about our audience. Our audience is great. I said. This album is going to double down. It's going to be her loss turned up in terms of the misogyny, some... in terms yeah. of all that. Like, and it's clear that's what this was. I saw somebody online say, say this, say something uh, about this. And I thought it was really smart. Honestly, they could have, you, you should, probably should have reversed the, the titles. If you call um, Drake and 21 project for all the dogs, and you call this her loss. That's arguably more accurate. Hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess. Yep, 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 yep. I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. Yep. I thought you were talking about. Uh, honestly, never mind. Calling that for no. all the dogs. Like what? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I, yeah. Can, can we briefly address before we get track by track? Sure, can we briefly sure. address the 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 Drake fans who are our age who mm-hmm. want him to make an album full of eight AMs and Charlottes? Like they're just expecting. Uh, Boy Wonder, 
conductor, alchemist, yeah. whoever, and right. for Drake to just rapidly rap for, for 20 songs? Um, in some ways, Drake, there are certain levels of art. There's, there's still a certain, even though like so much about music has changed where now people drop all these weird little projects and do all these little things and this, that, and third, there is still a certain caliber of artists, often a certain age of artists too, where they just don't really work that way. Mm -hmm. Right? Like when Drake puts out a project and yeah, you actually, I mean, he honestly, you could, you could say he has, there have been times where he's experimented, right? Like honestly, nevermind was an experiment, but almost to his detriment, it was a full length project. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if he had been a bit more judicious with the editing, had that be a little like seven or eight, like little like side thing or whatever, people would have been like, oh, that's just like, they would have, it would have been received differently, thought of differently, it would have been like a little experiment, right? But it's Drake, so it's a whole album, yeah. right? Like with the exception of like the collab projects, you know, with uh, Future and 21 respectively, like when Drake puts out a project, it's a whole big ordeal. And as his career has gone on, because he... He, like he keeps accumulating niches of fan bases that he thinks he has to appeal to on this album alone. Right. He's got stuff for the rapidly rap heads. He's got turn up records. He's got stuff for the kids. Now he's also throwing in, he's, he brought in Gordo, the guy who produced a lot of stuff on honest and nevermind. He's got a couple dance records. He's got the records where yes, he's talking about his ex-girlfriends. Like he's got all the Drake records we all know. But like, as he goes on with his career, because he is trying to be, like Drake capital letters on the, on the marquee. Like he's still trying to be the guy he's got to now get the kids. He's got to get like all these kinds of records. There's no room for that. Like the Drake could go the other way, which is like short focused, like, but I just, I think he's too old to think that way in a sense, or he hasn't had to think that way. You know what I mean? Like, I think and it's yeah. funny because like, he's sitting there working a lot with Yachty clearly. And Yachty is sitting out here doing this like waterfall approach where it's like, you know, put a record out and then like snow, you're basically, it's, he calls it waterfall. I think snowball is actually, that, that makes me feel a little better. Right. But like, but it's like every new song that comes out just keeps getting added to this collection and like keeps updating and keeps changing the name. And he's like, it's this whole like thing that most people aren't doing, you know what I mean? And like, so Yachty's clearly trying to experiment, but Yachty is a much newer artist, different mind frame has come up from a different era, all of that stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just think like, Drake's got too many fan bases to appeal to and he's too big. Like, I think when you're a level or two below like that AAA lister, it's different, you know, like fab was like, I think the first one we've talked about on the show many times before, like fab was, I think the first one to really understand one of the first ones to understand, Oh, I can put out like a soul tape project, but then I can also put out this other project and I can hit these different niches, but fab's not Drake. Right. 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 Yeah, so let's let's look at I want to look at two different sets of peers for Drake. Yeah, so I want to yeah. look at his peers for this generation, so Cole, sure. Kendrick, um and then I want to look at his peers from maybe like a more longevity standpoint, like a so historical like, standpoint. Yeah, so like Jay. Sure. Um Kanye. Like Kanye, there we go. Yep. So and Kanye kind of throws this question off. Um, because they didn't really, I mean, Jay did what Drake is doing now to a much smaller extent. So mm. what I mean by that is Jay would try to cater to different stuff, but not because he had accumulated all these niche niches. It was more so because that was like the thing for artists to do. It's the club record, street record, girl record, Timbaland, uh, Pharrell. Right. You know, whatever, just blaze, like get those different types of songs. Um, but is Drake the first one to have to like coming in when he came in and going about things and like dealing with the problems that he had that he has to address or, uh, you know, cater to or whatever? Um, is it an instance of not having a blueprint? Or is it an instance of him doing it incorrectly and there being you know a better what? way? You know what? Like, it just, it just hit me, you know, the old way from the nineties that like Jay, you know, big did it, Jay did it. Then everybody did it right. Jay did it. Fab did it. Like everybody in the 
early 2000s was on the East Coast was doing this, right? This like, okay, I got to have this sound and this sound and that sound and that sound. Mm -hmm. But that was all sounds of the moment. It was just sounds of the moment that were spread out oftentimes geographically, right? I got to have my Southern record, my West Coast record. Right. I got to have my this, right? And then, and then it was also like, oh, let me get my quote unquote crossover record or my chick record or my street single. Like you right. had those different sub little parts of your album. Would, as hip hop ages and there become these very clear cutoff markers, like now Drake's trying to do something like that, but he's also trying to do it like longitudinally over time. Like when LL Cool J was making records in 2000, he didn't feel a need to have to try to make something for his fan base from I'm bad. Right. Right. Drake is held to that kind of expectation. Like there, there are people who want, I want an 09 Drake. I want a 13 Drake. I right. want, and like, that's just a different expectation than I think we've had really before. Like that's a whole other challenge. It's like, because we are now hip hop is aging and there are, there's just like, I mean, you could say it's our generation. And I would say our, we're like about as young as it gets. And then a little older for sure, where they, people have just decided, let the kids be the kids. I'm cool. I'm not doing that. And there's a, there are enough rappers making music who are either from our generation or they're catering to our generation that that can still be viable. For but sure. these worlds are all like blending and merging online. So Drake's trying to play in the middle of all that. And like, sometimes if you try to make everybody happy, you make nobody happy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. The Griselda fans want him to do this. And the Drake and SZA fans or the Sexy Red fans want him to do this. <laughs> and the Honestly Nevermind fans want We're him to do this. We're going to talk about that Sexy Red record. But yes, we are. Yes, we are. Um, yeah, you're right. So then, okay, so then let's go to his peers. Because I think you made an excellent yeah. point. I don't, I don't have anything else to add. Um, so, Jermaine, yeah. Kendrick. Yeah. Um, how are they approaching their problem of being a top tier, A plus plus, S tier artist, or what have you? Um, and are they going about it better than Drake, or are they different types of artists? Mm. So they, though they are on that same wavelength, they don't have to address the same things that maybe Drake does in the eyes of of, of listeners. Yeah, I think this is like Hollywood. Right. So in Hollywood, you have like people who you met, you have actors who might be really known for making blockbusters, like big, like crazy movies. And then you've got actors who are like, oh no, they're, they're coming for their Oscar, for you sure. know? Mm -hmm. And like Kendrick is like the actor who's coming for the Oscars, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He'll have some big hits, et cetera. But like at the end of the day, he is trying purposely or not, but like he's in that critically acclaimed lane. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And hip hop is big enough that he can be plenty happy, make plenty of money, have a whole like little mini economy around Kendrick and the whole thing and all that. Like, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But Drake to me is closer to like, no, he's like, you know, he's like Tom Cruise in a sense. Right. Yeah. Big budget. Yeah, sure. There's some critically acclaimed stuff in there. You know what I'm saying? But like, you know, Kendrick is like Daniel Day Lewis or like, you know what I'm saying? Where it's like yeah. people with like multiple Oscars, like it's just different. Like it's different ways of approaching, of approaching. I don't really think those two are playing much the same game anymore. You know what I mean? I mean, look yeah. at how Kendrick wrote, like the way that he makes his projects, like, I mean, almost like Drake is introspective, but like not, he's introspective in the same exact way every single time. Like there's no, mm -hmm. there, like you don't really get much progression or growth with, with Drake necessarily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kendrick is the opposite of that, perhaps to a fault where, it, you know, on his last project where it's like, oh, I get it. We're going to be in therapy with Kendrick for yeah. two hours. All right. Yeah. Let's see what happens here. You know what I'm saying? Therapy for two hours. So then I think if you want to use the Hollywood yeah. parallel, is Cole like a Leo where he's like a little bit of both? You know, he's got with the bigger records, but he can act his tail off and get the Oscar. I don't think, I don't like, see, the thing is, I think like, I think Cole, the interesting, the fascinating thing about Cole is like, um, he, he's getting better. And we so we are like, yeah. he is, but he hasn't really had, like he, like, listen, I know that, I know that like clever, good of him to include himself in this, in this, in this trilogy, right? Like where it, this three, this threesome where it's, mm -hmm. you know, Kendrick, Drake and Cole. 
Cole does not have hits on the level of Drake. Like they're not even playing on the same, like it's, it's not even, first of all, like Drake's never even had a number one record ever, ever. And Cole. Oh yeah. Sorry. Cole's never had a number, never okay. had a number one record. Like they're, Cole's not really. He's never had a number one. No. And in fact, this is part of the thing we'll talk about for this. So um, there are two apparently uh, contenders from this Drake album to be number one this week. Yes. One is, one is the Cole record, which was the early favorite. Mm-hmm. You know what's coming on strong? What's that? The Yeet record. We're going to talk about the Yeet record. Yeah. But I'm saying, so like this, if, if this is it, I mean, if, if this, if, if it is the Cole record, that's number one, that will be Cole's first number one billboard song. Mm-hmm. Right. So Cole, they came out of that same blog era, sort of right. That mixed that late blog era, mixtape era, late sort of blog mixtape era. But Cole's just not had that quite level of success, but really who has, you know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, honestly, like you could say like Travis or future, like there are other people who've had more successful hits, you know, uh, closer, maybe not quite close to Drake, but you know what I'm saying? Like Cole, Cole is the people's champ right now. That's what Cole is. People want Cole to win. Yep. And what's great. What's amazing for Cole is like, he gets to succeed. Like, when his album, next album comes out, his album will go number one, probably, right? Mm. But yeah. like nobody expects him to put out multiple hit singles that all go number one off that album, that all have like incredibly catchy hits. Like Drake has set an expectation for himself with his past stuff, like the way it's performed commercially. That's just mm-hmm. like, what are you gonna do? Like, how many number one songs did did Views have? Right? Like, how are you supposed to compete? Had like three right. or four. Like, how are you supposed to compete with that? More slaps you know? than the Beatles, right? Well, I mean, he, I mean, and, and now it was like, you know, this is how we'll talk about again, the J Cole Drake, you know, the J Cole f- record on this project, but at the end, he talks about, he's one away from Michael. Well, that's, mm. that's as of, that's because slime you out. or sorry. Slime on you. Was it slime you out? Slime yeah. you out. Slime you out. Um, <laughs> slime slime on on you. Shout, <laughs> shout out to Nickelodeon. Shout out to, you can't do that on television. <laughs> slime on you sounds like an, uh, a bit more of like a, like a late nineties, like R and B version yeah. of that. I'm slime. Yes. Anyway, as, um, as yet as yet ideal yeah <laughs> um so drake recorded that part after slime slime you out went number one so like mm-hmm. now he really is one away mm-hmm. from michael like it's just it's and yeah streaming has changed all that and and you know it doesn't mean what it used to mean but it still means something yeah right for sure so yeah. i don't know like cole is an interesting he's an interesting one to put into the mix you know um it's I always appre- it's always fun when somebody can like throw themselves into that like conversation about who's the best out right now mm-hmm. and they are still like kind of like progress they're st- they're like sort of progressing like up the the art it is still bending up for them so like the more the more time goes on the more that sounds about right in 97 when Jay-Z said Biggie Jay-Z or Nas mm-hmm. he was not on Biggie's level he was not on Nas's level for sure he inserted himself into that conversation. He inserted himself and he grew into that. And mm-hmm. now you listen back and you're like, of course, Biggie, Jay-Z or Nas. And that was, right. Listen, that was just him inserting himself in that level. Just like Jada tried to insert himself into a top five dead or alive. Like, you know, people mm-hmm. always do Wayne, this, right? Wayne, best rapper alive. Yep, right. yep, yep, yep. Right, right, right. So yeah. Cole's just a part of that. But like, the truth is, I don't know. I mean, for like a certain kind of like, basically, if you're a, if you're like, I don't know, a rapper who actually cares about your bars and you are capable of making these kind of like blockbuster albums with with commercially viable singles and your primary way of rapping is not the sort of future young thug travis scott style where there's right. more harmonizing than rapping like there's just few of those guys left frankly yeah 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 and it's interesting because drake in the eyes of many has peaked creatively yeah, sure um kendrick is probably about to make a turn. I have um, no idea what he's going to do. What, if he does, if he goes in the Kim direction, which I'm predicting, sure. that's going to be a turn. Um, because he's gone. It's not that he's progressed. He's like gotten deeper, you know? Mm. So just in terms of content and presentation, it's just, it's yeah. just gone. It's not down. It's just, it's deeper. Whereas Cole, I've been saying like, I said that his run started with KOD, but when you go back and listen to KOD, he's so much better of an artist now than he was then. 
Mm. Um, yeah, absolutely. Not even yeah. close. Yeah. So like even even like the off season is as good as that album was. Yeah. What he's done in the last two years, two, three years, has even like eclipsed that. Oh, for so sure. I his, f- his 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 fe- his feature run right now is ridiculous. So I can see the fall off. If if you're having that parallel, putting himself into the conversation similar to a J, he has now become J and he grows into even though I think he's already there, but I think, he's now I, grown. Right, he's I grown think he's, into that. He's he's do, I mean, and honestly, in a very J like way, where like J's guest appearances, like certain ones would like sort of 90, 98 J. He would go up that ladder a little bit more, mm-hmm. a little mm-hmm. bit more, a little bit more. Yeah. Expectations for the fall off are going to be insane. And what's crazy is I, I feel like if he's rapping like this, it would be, pr- you'd be pretty hard pressed to bet against the album being bad. He's in the zone. He's, he's in, the zone. in the zone. It's one of those things like Cole has, and I even say this just as an artist, as a, as a, as a rapper, yeah. like hearing what he did with Yachty and we didn't even, and we didn't really talk about that. We didn't even thing. get into that bag. We briefly addressed it last episode, but like, that's a top three verse of the year. The three best verses of 2023 are that, uh, Andre's verse on the killer Mike record and, uh, Fonte on the black milk album for me, mm. no better rapping than those three records. Um, but what he's done, like he's made, <sighs> He's made me push my pen as a rapper. Like, okay, mm. I need to, I got to rap. Yeah. This ain't, I, <laughs> and, and I'm finding a lane and I'm like wanting, and I'm inspired to do something similar, which has not happened for me personally in a very long time as an MC where like rapper, a rapper has inspired me to rap. Um, yeah, so what Cole's doing is unprecedented, man. And and especially for me, who was very like <laughs> we've been notoriously hard on him. And I still think rightfully so, because those early albums are not good. They're not good. No. Um That's what he I mean. has, he's got like he's just got it's like a whole separate career act. Like I'm trying to listen. think of another rapper where this is comparable. Where it's like he was known, he was famous, he had an established fan base, and then what, like almost almost like 10 years into his career. All of a sudden, just escalating to an upper level is like somebody's done that before. Somebody, another rapper's done there that have, before. There have definitely been rappers where they have kind of like toiled, and then before they broke big later in their career, right? Like Two Chains broke later in his career. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like this is—he wasn't toiling. He wasn't like no sort of no. Like he, people He's, knew who J Cole was. He just tier. like yeah. That's crazy. Shout out to Cole, man. Yeah. Shout out to Cole. Oh, we're going to praise him later. Don't worry. Yeah, we will. We will. Okay. So. All right. Is it time to go track by track? I feel like we've, we've talked a lot about hypotheticals and. Yeah. And I still have a lot more overall notes. I'm saving those for later. So I think we should just go track by track. Let's go track by track. What I need you to do for me is I need uh you to play the songs because spoiler alert, (laughs) some of these songs run into each other and I need to be reminded. I got you. All All right. right. Thank you. So. We start with track one, Virginia Beach, produced by Harley Arsenal and 40. Just play little bits here to kind of jump ahead here a little bit. I know what you say. Do we have separate audio tracks on this? Say I could have treated you better. What was that? Do we have separate audio tracks on this? Do you want them to be separate? Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, like, can we do it directly through the app? Uh, no, no. Okay. I'd have to like right. record and then we'd have to like do a whole thing. Nah, don't worry about it. Okay. All right. I don't know. I think I did all right. You know what I'm saying? And you know how you get drawing conclusions like you got a bar since you're clean All right. First of all, that hook is terrible. <laughs> um, that you didn't even let the V. <laughs> no, no. Hook is terrible. But here's the thing. Um, that is a fantastic Frank Ocean sample. Um, that beat is hard. It sounds like really good in the car. Yes, it does. Um, I like the rest of the song where he's not singing. Mm-hmm. Right. I think him rapping works. I think him singing about lean on the hook does not work for me at all. At, note to what you were saying before. Not a good sign. Not a um, good sign. <sighs> Drake has kind of like with his lifestyle, he's like worked himself. Is it worked himself into a shoot? Basically, Correct. like he's like 
yeah, he's just come all like he has like d- made the br- like bragged all the things and then like actually no, he starts living the life and oh now he <laughs> he mentions he's that unrecognizable. On, he mentions that on the way from home. He's talking about mm. like yo, I wasn't I wasn't a gangster the way I am now. It's like oh what, okay, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? You're 36 and you're very rich. What are you doing? But whatever, right. whatever, 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 um, whatever. Great Frank Ocean sample. Yeah. Um, what what Frank Ocean song is that? Do you know? It's uh, it was made for the Django and Chain soundtrack, but they didn't put it on there. And I think he might have put it on. So it's like it was one I had never heard of, but it's like 2012 era. So it's like oh, okay. But um, it's a great sample. Um, classic like 40, right? Like mm-hmm. sort of pitching and stretching and reversing and doing all the things. Yeah. Um. You know Drake is old because he said it's on site like www, which is a real 1999 bar if I've ever heard one before. We talked about this last week in that that first 8 a.m. in Charlotte verse with with yeah. all the likes. Yeah, there are He's likes. Reaching back. There are so many likes on this album. So yeah. many likes. Drake's writing. For, he, I don't think Drake's get. I don't think uh, there are there are definitely uh, R and B like there are some uh, some of those R and B ish songs where he's getting some some help from folks, but. I don't, like you look at these credits and he, you know, people will say Drake's had ghostwriters and stuff like that in the past. When Drake's had writers, they've been credited, right? I'm not really seeing people. I think he's writing for himself, 100%. So you're yeah. getting that like, like, and, and, yeah. and nobody's there to be like, you could say this better. Mm. Mm. Um, Unless, I mean, hey, where's, where's your boy? Where's Roy Woods at? Where's... <laughs> Where's what? uh what's what's the what's the kid's name um not not party uh division where's division at where's division um who who were who, who were the OVO rappers where's o, where's O B O Brian <laughs> scheming up is not a bad record I know you like that song way more I than do. I did I, I like the was, beat I like the beat a lot yeah I thought it was kind of generic but also it's fine. Drake was just that was Drake was in a zone at that point yeah, just that like, was a different time different time um, different time. I, like I, you, so there's. I'm gonna say this about a, a number of tracks on here. Um, if you cut out something, in this case, if you cut out the hook, mm. I think this track would be a great opener. I just I can't stand the hook. It's so bad. Um, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Were you gonna say something else? I, the I'm only sorry. thing I was thinking I was gonna say is when we talked about earlier about how people saw the title for the dogs and they thought it was gonna be about something else. Yeah, we talked about this on the show last week. When people saw the track listing, they saw Virginia Beach and they said, "All right, <laughs> here we go, <laughs> round go. two, round." All right, oh, he's going for it. No, no, no. In classic 2023 rapper fashion, the title only has the barest bit to do with the actual song itself. Yeah, yeah. What he says? What he say? You look nice, but your hood really like hood, Virginia like Beach, Virginia or, something. Beach yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, what was I gonna say? Um, oh, so the consistent theme that I'm going to say with this album is there are good parts here and there on mm. the majority of these songs, but the bad parts are so bad, mm. it ruins the song. Interesting. And Interesting. this is one of those, like, I like the, I like the beat. I like the beat. The production I, is dope. When he gets into his rapper bag, some of the when, pockets he finds on this album. Yeah. Once he once he gets into the second half of the song, especially like when they kind of really filter the beat, like mm-hmm. the sample out, and he kind of goes for it. It's like, yes, just cut to this. But yeah, you need I'll, to introduce I'll do... Drake to Rick Rubin. You know what I'm saying? Just come in there, and <laughs> start slicing stuff. Slice it up. This is 23 yeah. tracks, man. Yeah, we go. We unfortunately are gonna get there. Okay, I don't blame right. Drake for that though. In a sense. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about that. Let's talk I blame Billboard. That. I do. Mm. They've created a monster. Mm. They've incentivized this. Mm. And it's, so, like, it's like content, right? It, that's exactly right. Yeah. I that's got exactly you. right. I got you. Yeah. They've incentivized this. They've made, they, they've made, they've, they've created a monster where like, it's just how many songs can you get on there that are long enough to count as a, as a full song, but not super long because you want people to keep listening. Like they've, they've, you know, just like CDs created certain incentives, streaming mm-hmm. has created others. So I've, this is all changeable. It really is. They could fix this. Shout out to Chris Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to J. Cole for making fun of rappers whose 30 song see, album makes a measly hundred thousand. A measly hundred thousand. Um, but yeah. All right, so I think I like Virginia Beach more than you. 
But the hook is bad. We can we can both agree the hook is terrible. The hook is bad. I, I mean, the hook is bad. I like the beat and I like the pocket yeah. he finds like on the second half of the song when he starts yeah. rapping. Yeah. But all in all, like there's other when you talk about Drake intros. Hmm. This is this is at the bottom. This is bottom tier all for right, Drake. So intros. let's see. And this is a good thing. That Fireworks saying. over my dead body. Tuscan leather. Um. Legend was legend. Legend, the yeah. Legend's the intro. Yep. What was it on views? I'm looking. Hold on. Uh, keep the family close. Okay. See Man, that was that, yeah. That was bad. That was bad. That was bad. That was bad. Not great. Not great. Uh, Scorpion. It was survival. Mm. Eh. What's uh? What's more life? Um. I love how more life is listed as a mixtape on his Wikipedia. No, get out of here. Come on. Um, more oh more life is free smoke which is that's a okay. that's a that's a good drake intro yeah i like i like aggressive drake intros what a time to be alive is digital dash that's okay people might not like i mean even like her loss singer. opened strong oh yeah i mean that went viral right yeah honestly though like we'll here's the, here's the thing though there have it is not uncommon for drake records to get off to a little bit of a slow start I mean, lust, lust for life, Houston, Atlanta, Vegas. Like Even that though album, those are like those, those are incredible, incredible records, but he he does not typically. It's not so, he he's back and forth. Sometimes he really does start a little bit more chill, which that I think people always forget every single time. He did the same with sure. um, with honestly, never mind. Yeah, I mean, let, I don't want to as as bad as Certified Lover Boy is. Champagne Poetry is also fire. That's a good intro. Yeah, it's a dope intro. It's one of the best songs on the album, actually. Yep, 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 yep. All right. Next up, we've got Amen featuring Tizo Touchdown. He Tizo is all over Tizo. this project, actually. T yes, he is. Yes, he is. Father God, I come to you to say thank you. Gospel samples. That's all. I don't want to ask for anything. I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praying, praying. Jump around a little bit here. Church like a priest, perks for the week, perks for yourself, perks for your niece. No, you don't do perks, baby, but that's a perks that gave me. Red Mercedes with the red seats, buy red wig, caught the red seat with a neat freaking man. God forgive me. Yeah, I mean, so this record's produced by, this is a weird combo of producers, produced by Sango. Shout out to Sango. Uh, is it Budgie? I, uh, I think so, yeah. Budgie Beats, and, right? And Budgie and Tizo. Mm -hmm. That's a weird combo of uh, of producers. I think the beat was just Sango and Budgie, and I think Tizo came in and yeah, whatever. Just, Probably did yeah. some arranging, arranging sure. or something like that. Yeah. Um, I like this beat. This beat is hard. Again, I really like Tizo on this track. Yeah, Tizo... Is this the best use of Tizo so far? Because he's been on a lot of different projects. I also like his, he's got a couple other uses later on in this project that I like. Um, oh, one of them is really bad. Oh, it's funny. Come on. No, that's terrible. Oh, we're no. going to talk about that. Nah, that's terrible. Come on. It's terrible. Yeah, um, I mean, but again, like, <sighs> praying to you find a man, like, all right, all right. <laughs> It's just it's yeah. It's corny. I think I think Drake works on this for what it is. It also helps yeah. this song is two minutes and twenty one seconds long, so it's very like, it's short. Just, just very short, in and out, no big deal. Yeah, there's a couple of songs on on this album that are pretty. I mean, God, there's an interlude on here that's actually longer than this song, which that song needs to, well it needs to be cut, but it could have been cut in half or split in the thirds or something. Um, yeah. But yeah, again. I like T's on here, like this beat, yeah. like the pockets Drake finds, and it's it's short. It's almost like too short. Mm. You want more. I wouldn't be mad at another 45 seconds because sure. on the flip, some of these songs, a lot of these songs drag. Right. Like this next record we're gonna talk about has no business being 40 minutes and 46 seconds, right? Oh, four you said four minutes or forty minutes? Four. Okay. Like, wait, wait a minute. What version do you have? It's just that that the skit in the middle of this next song just keeps going for forty minutes. You got the um, you got the FUA rip. 
Listen, I've been on the Drake tracker and they got an extended. I'm just kidding. Mm, right, 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 um, right. Actually, you know, surprisingly, uh, not a ton of not a ton of leaks. Um, only a handful of records that didn't one or two that didn't make this project. So, mm, okay. Anyway, um, anything else you want? So, Amen, it's cool. Nah, yeah. I mean, at what point do you want to have the conversation about um, about um? I just I just drew a blank. Content. But content. Yeah. I've accepted Drake for what he is. That's where I'm at. I I see like I feel away because I feel like I do that with most of the hip hop I listen to. Yeah. Right? It's like so then when I when I feel like people are like uh, I, I want to have a larger conversation about content and about the, the, the standards and maybe why Drake isn't holding up to those standards. I, I think part of the problem, like, I think people are, uh, people are just mad about this project in general. Right. And I think it's not just because he's being misogynistic or that his content isn't like whatever it's because he actually can rap. Mm -hmm. So people are like, they just expect more. It's because he's, in his late thirties now, mid to late thirties, and we know he can rap. And so because of that, people are like, come on, what are you doing? I think the worst thing is if you are a rapper and people hold you to no expectations at all, that For is sure. a kiss of death. For sure. For sure. So it's weird, right? And this is coming from a rapidy rapper, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Records, his rapidy rap records are less about the pockets he finds and more about what he's saying. Where mm. for me, I enjoy the pockets that he finds. Yeah. On some of these records. Finds a pocket and he just stays there, similar to what Cole did on the Yachty record. Sure. But like that's a that's a pretty consistent theme. So like I'm not I'm not a I don't want Drake to like rapidy rap more because I feel like 8 a.m. in Charlotte is going to be the best that we get at this stage, right? So, mm. like, th there's not going to be this moment where he's going to, like, absolutely blow me away with an incredible rap verse because those types of records are already, like, they're top-tier rapping. Like, they're, they're really good rapping, right? Um, does anybody ask why Drake raps about what he raps about? Has anybody asked Drake? Has anybody asked themselves that? And maybe like <laughs> tried to, I mean, cause of course nobody's going to ask Drake, right? Like, why do you, like, I mean, nobody's going to get close that close. Um, because for me, like, I think a lot of the, a lot of the critique that I've seen, and I agree with it, is that the expectation is there because Drake came into music very vulnerable and transparent right. and reflective and all that stuff. And now that's not the case anymore. Right. Um, when I, I go ahead, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. When I think about, and again, I don't know Drake, so this is just pure speculation, but it's just right. me doing math, quick maths, right? When you get a guy who is notoriously naive and you throw him into the pitfalls of the music industry and he is surrounded with Birdman. J Prince <laughs> and God knows who else is around, right? All right. these wolves. How do you expect somebody who is on record cons constantly taking advantage of from his record deal to the women in his life? How do you expect him to still be like reflective and vulnerable and whatever? His wall, his guard is up. I know, yeah. my, I know my guard would be up if I was him. So it's like, no, I'm going to make sure because we've put as people, we've put, first of all, we don't know what it's like to be him, but we've put guards up for less, not less, but different. I, I, Cause I don't want to, I don't want to demean that. We've put guards up for, uh, for different reasons. And we assume, and this gets into the Joe Budden conversation, but we assume that because a person has money and status that none of those things are going to bother him because he has money and status that we don't. And it's not true. Right. It's not true. It's not true. So 
I think the only way to approach it is to do exactly what you did, Doc, is to just accept, like, yo, this is who he is at 30. You, you want him to rap about, you know, uh, uh, you know, not be rapping about women and taking drugs and doing all this stuff. You want him to do that, but guess what? He's not. So it, what do you do with that? I, I mean, I don't know. Like you listen to this, uh, you listen to this album. Like it's very clearly a guy who, like you said, right. The, the Drake that we knew, right. Like what he has done is he has thrown money at the problem. And, you know, now he's probably, sounds like he's throwing, whether it's drugs or drink or whatever, some combination of the two at the problem. Mm -hmm. And like this entire project is, I mean, like littered with like references to failed relationships and him being mad at women and this, that, and the third. And like, it's not working, you know, like he's kind of like, just like, I feel for, in a sense, it's like you feel for the guy, right. Where it's like, mm -hmm. like you said, all the money in the world, man, listen, it's not gonna make you happy. Right. For sure. It can, it can, it can, you know, especially like once you, once you aren't in poverty, once you're not living paycheck to paycheck, once you're not feeling like you have to scrap for every little thing, like once you get past all that in life, if you can get past that in life, at the end of the day, like sometimes money just, in fact, I mean, in a real sense, like it's hard to talk about Drake's music without talking about his dating life because mm -hmm. that's basically most of what he raps about at this point, right? Or mm -hmm. the failures thereof or whatever the case might be. Yep. Who is Drake supposed to date actually? Like, the pro I mean, and, and it, you know, his attempts to, uh, we'll say, date other famous women in the music industry have not gone well. Maybe he should try actresses or something. I don't know what the kid will, you know, right. Jalen didn't really work out. But like, he, right. like, he struck out continuously. But like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, it seems like what he is doing instead is he's like, all right, 20 to 27 year old Instagram models. Like, that's, you know, I don't think he's doing that to find love. You know what I'm saying? Right. But so, he's, but under all that, he's still him. But under all that, he's still him. That's right. Yeah. So you're, you're doing what you said, but you're still responding to it in the way that old you has traditionally responded to women. So your feelings are hurt. You're upset when this person is only using you for your money. They're taking advantage of you. And, of or, they they're, and, they're, and or they're young. It was, like, transac it was always transactional. Transactional. He knows that. He knows that. And if you're 36 and you're dating a girl who's 20, I can't even fathom. I've dated, I've dated women who were the oldest person. Well, the oldest, oh, well, <laughs> in my day, I've dated, I've dated as old as 15 years older than me. Mm. Yes. I was like 20. To and I was like 20 and she was like 35. Yeah, I was 20, she was 35. Um, I had a long term relationship where I was 27 and she was 35, something like that. Um, and then I've dated younger where I was 30 and she was 23. Hmm. And that was different. Those all come, those age ranges come with a different set of that. Th and that 30 to 23, God bless her. I won't say, I'll, I'll never yeah. say anything bad about her, but that age difference was very apparent for me. And I'm not about to sit up here and say that I was just Mr. Mature <laughs> Billy D. Williams, Colt 45. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, I can only imagine if you're his status and you're dating a girl, an Instagram model, some type of, you know, you know, maybe whatever, whatever type of yeah. girl. It's just, whew, you're almost like, you're almost asking for the problems. Just because right. the, the, the level of maturity is just so different. Yeah. How, how much did you grow up from not only 20 to 36, but God, 20 to 25? It's a completely different person. Completely yeah. different person. Yeah. Several times over. So, yeah. It's weird. It's weird. All right. You ready for track three? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to start getting that stuff out the yeah. way because... We're talking about the musicality of it, and I, yeah. I don't hear anybody critique the musicality of the album. I hear people critique oh, the I content. Do. I okay. definitely hear people. Yeah, for sure. Okay, okay, okay. For sure. I'm hearing all content, but okay, let's, let's, let's go. Let's get back to the music. Well, we're on different internets. We've, we've discovered, we've talked 100%. about that before. Yes. Um, all right, next track is Calling For You with, uh, with the, the newly legal 21 Savage. Newly legal. <laughs> I was in a club before she even had it. She was 21. I don't see a savage. She wanted me to one. 
She know it comes steady. She wanna hold the gun. If you want it, you can have it. Shorty's still young. So she don't know the classes. I see her body one on one. Yeah. All right. So real quick. Um, we are suddenly very, yeah. very hard into it's the little it's the Yachty sound, right? So this is produced by Lil Yachty, Forty, Cash Cobain, and like five other people. Um mm -hmm. so this song is basically like there's three parts to the song, right? There's uh mm -hmm. Drake uh rapping, uh which you just um which you just heard mm -hmm. uh with that beat. Then there's an interlude, which is painful. Um do you remember this interlude? Mm-hmm. Do you ain't gotta okay. play it? Do you, do you know what the story behind it is? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> so shout out to Genius for somebody linked this up and put pulled this all together. Right. Okay. So basically it's a story about a woman complaining about um, you know, she was like, Why why am I not in first class? Like I'm mm -hmm. a coach, what's going on? Blah mm -hmm. blah blah blah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So within the last week, I think this was added recently. Within the last week, oh, I heard about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your man Pusha T. Yeah, did a Twitter rant about American Airlines, mm -hmm. right? About how like why would you know sold me first class seat, you know, it's coach, blah blah blah, all this other stuff. And so this skit is basically supposed to be like this is a girl that like Pusha has like flown out to like go on vacation or whatever. Like that's like the perspective of the skit, oh, right? Okay, got it. Which is so petty and so like inside baseball and like random and yeah. like who is drake making this album for i've asked that question about five months but we um, but, but we said that it's similar to eminem where it's like it just feels like he's in his own like he bubble. Is. he's in his own bubble i think you, know? you get so rich and famous. it's a kanye problem too but just different. Yeah. like you get so rich and famous it's like right um so it's a it's an interlude that should not be on the song at all it should just be killed um and then we get a beat switch uh, for 21, let me see, let me jump to that. Let me see if we can. I sat in the back of a whack ass vacation. Okay, we get it. I'm like, why are we Who's eating it? jerk? Yeah, uh, it might be. No, the ox that was fired. Though. Why can't we switch it? Why can't you do shit every day? What? You wanted to cry. <laughs> you were looking for Apparently 21 must have been like, I'm not rapping on that Yachty record. You got something else? <laughs> Sorry for your loss. What else you got? Yeah. They're like, all right, we got you. What do you want a sample? Wow. Fuck, nigga, want to get fat on. Um, start your nigga up. Put that iron on 21. And then niggas dying over that way. Yeah. Quit to leave an op in the ashtray. All right, you've heard this. Tw this I mean, you, it, the 21 has made this record before. It's so funny. You were talking about content. Nobody says anything about 21's content. I feel like. People just like, they all decided, they just go, oh, 21 can rap now. And they kind of clap and they applaud and they're like, excellent. You know, and it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's really, it's really a testament to how people view Southern hip hop. It's like, <laughs> listen, it's like, it's like, <laughs> listen, listen, I'll say it. It's Ooh. like, um, it's like when, when, when white people talk to black people and say, well, you're one of the good ones. Oh God. 100% uh, that's what I, that is. Yeah, man. It's one hundred percent. The expectations for the expectations for uh, for twenty one are not there. Are, I mean, it's basically like, hey, twenty one's here. Mm -hmm. This feels like so. This feels like a her loss leftover. One hundred percent. The best part of this song is the end when just the sample plays. Mm. Like, oh, this sample is hard. Just by it's itself. Not bad. What's interesting is like, it's kind of trying to mimic the way that. Um, metro does those mm -hmm. kind of beats but mm -hmm. it's very clearly not metro right which is interesting metro's not on this project at all i told you drake you and that, metro you had that, drake and that, metro don't god, like each other thank god yeah i thank god yeah the is. thank god i heard was about metro yeah yeah yeah, yeah, hmm, yeah. drake and metro do not like each other do not like each other so um not surprised because those metro would have put some much harder drums on that sample way harder drums on that yeah yeah. So this record, I'm disappointed. I don't, even, this, I don't even know how to judge this record. I'm disappointed in this record because it's track three. Mm. Track three is supposed to be the record, right? If you're talking sequencing. Back in the day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. What so would you, put, you put first person shooter right here? Probably. I would, I would honestly, I would have cut out. Ooh, 
I would cut Virginia Beach, but would I have started with Amen? <clears throat> yeah, it's like, not bad. Like it's like a slow kind of like throw you off a little yeah, bit. Maybe there might be another song in this album that I may may have started off or may have started the album off with. But like I'm going, I'm going. I like Drake albums that start aggressive because I love. Yeah, yeah, if you're reading this, is too late. Like they're just sure. that's like the best opening sequence to me in his discography. Yeah. I'm going like I would go like Amen, Daylight, First Person Shooter. Like I would just, I just go for it. Yeah. I would, I would, I would heave. Yeah. Um, Cause Fear Heights is. Well, let's talk about Fear Heights. Uh, produced by Oz, uh, Pooh Beats, Benny X. Uh, Benny X is all over this project. Okay. Um, and so. Benny, uh, Benny X, are you t- B-Y-N-X, you talking about Binks? Is that how you pronounce it or is it Benny X? I think it's Benny X. Is it? I thought it was, yeah. I thought it was Binks. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Same thing. Tomato, um, tomato. Tomato, tomato. Um, I think one of his tags even says like Benny X, right? Okay. Um, okay. All right. But well, um, you you called him you called him blast, and I thought it was blessed. So I'm old. You called it uh, GIF, and I said it was GIF. So I'm. It's it's I'm is I who is wrong. So it's okay. I'm okay with that. Um. So let's play Fear Heights real quick. Hey, hey. Look, why they make it sound like I'm still hung up on you? Be- because you are Trick. Be. Y'all can't run me. Better enter me. Better it's not me. I'm anti man T. Yeah. Alright, so apparently it's time to diss Rihanna. Oh, is that a Rihanna this diss? This whole first part is about Rihanna. Is it really? Yes, it is. How 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 <laughs> How, <laughs> how have you confirmed that? Just honestly, if now that I've said that, go on Genius, read the lyrics. Don't All even right, don't up. even hover over to see what people have said. Just read the lyrics. All right, hold up. I'm, I'm gonna, we're gonna do a live on the show. Hold there up. you go. This is what y'all pay for. All right, Fair Heights. Man, leave that girl alone. Oh, why they make it sound like I'm still hung up on you? That can never be. Gal can't run me. Okay. Yep. Better, Better him, him than, than me. me. Better it's not, it's not me. me. I'm anti. anti. I'm anti. Yeah, the sex was average with you. Sex with me is so mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah, I'm anti because I had it with you. I had what way a... better than you. Yeah, that, yeah, that what man, a he's still loser. with you. He can't and leave I had you. Better than you. And that man, he's still with you. He can't, oh, he can't leave you because y'all got kids together. Y'all go on vacation. I bet it's anti. Right, what like a... anti like a, yeah, anti like a family picture. I mean, yeah. <laughs> What a loser. <laughs> That's corny, man. That's super corny. Terrible part. Like, just cut this. What are you doing? Wow. Yeah. It's straight from, they said that that was really his villain arc when she, uh, when he went to go kiss her at the MTV Awards and she like turned her head. Like they said, like, it's a running joke that like sure, basically but this like, started. She's all not of this. obligated to kiss you, man. Like I don't know what to tell you. Um Let's so see. this is a t- it's a terrible start to the song. But we're gonna jump ahead a little bit. And I am a bad bad Yeah, man, he's still with you, he can't leave. Y'all go on vacation, I bet it's auntie. Yeah, please. There he go, there he go, um uh, uh shaming. But see, just cut to this. So at the very least, we got a hard beat. He's finding a little pocket. He's flowing. He's not really rapping about anything. He has a real incredibly reckless bar on the song, though. What do you say? Virginia, I pull up and chill. Mm. You know that's his wife's name. Come on, man. Mm. That's reckless. <laughs> <sighs> so, um, how do you feel about Fear Heights? I don't really like this song. I ain't gonna watch it. Uh, like, if you cut off that whole first part and just went right to that beat, I would just listen to it for the beat. Yeah, but I don't like the... Uh... The little ad lib he does after the 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 huh or the hey, I don't like that. And then I hate that I know you you a cat, but can your pee do that? That's corny. Yeah, I, like I that. know. I don't like that. 
he's talking about like, you know, don't tell me, don't tell me you're scared of little Drake. Don't tell me you're scared of little Aubrey. Like he's, that's after the Virginia and chill line. Like he's, mm. he's, he's being reckless. Yeah. I'm not mad at this. Again, I would cut the intro and I think I'd be all right. Yeah, I'm good. All right. But you like daylight. Daylight is hard. I like daylight. Start a bunch of fucking ass. You know why? You don't have the guts to do it. All right. We get it. I know. Haven't heard this used in a rap song in a long time. I was going to say, time. we're really throwing it back. <laughs> Yo. The chorus, we, so we were just about to skip this part. The chorus shot him in daylight, and then mm. the whole opening to the next verse is crazy. Re, is so, I mean, <laughs> the, the 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 next verse. He he talks about how everybody thought that he had X killed, mm. and then he says, "I'm lo- so low key. I'm happy they got somebody." What is wrong with him? Feels like he's above the law. <laughs> we, <sighs> Feels like he's above he's the law. He's really committing to being in his villain era, isn't he? Mm-hmm. But it, it, it comes off like LeBron in Miami. Yeah. Do you remember when Drake was likable? Yeah. Hotline bling. When he was in on the joke a little bit, mm-hmm. he knew how to like wink at the camera and kind of be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, blah, blah. It's all in good fun or whatever. I love how like so I think back to like a record like Take Care where he had uh like a song like Headlines, right? Where my reaction to Headlines is, all right, Drake, you're not really tough. Yeah, that Maybe was everybody. You... Yeah, yeah. So his what he his lesson learned to that's an old school CRS callback right there. His lesson learned was not to stop making records like that. It was to double down, start trying to live the life. So he could feel like he could authentically make records like that. <laughs> I wouldn't have predicted that in 2011. I gotta say, man, we're not talking about the most important part of the song, though. Are you're not gonna play it, are you? Oh come on! Tell me you didn't get ideas about your son or one mm. of your kids on the project. Come on, man! Shot him in daylight. My son would never do this. I like it when you make it, my 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 man. My, 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 man. Don't talk to my man like that. It, it's not the, it's not the, it's not, <laughs> <laughs> it's not the fact that he did it. It's doing it after daylight. <laughs> I know. It's like, yo, I just, in like low key admitted to having this person killed. Well, no, I mean, here's he, Adonis. He's Aww. saying, he's saying I didn't do it. You know, they swear I did it, but I'm happy that it happened. But then, no, you're right. You're right. He's it, that's here's OJ Adonis Simpson. If I with this, like, the beat is so weird. It's like, yeah, it, it's what it's like if you're if it's basically if your kid was like, I like boom back records, and it's like, okay, here you go. Like, here's <laughs> it's like if he if if like if your kid was was much younger, and like for example, if like if 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 Elijah, if you would have gotten your hands on Elijah <clears throat> and taught him how to produce when he was like 10 six. instead of 14, <laughs> six, seven, yeah, 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 six, seven, eight, something like that, he would have produced a beat like this. He would have been like, don't talk to my man like that. Yeah, nah, he would have been right on. We, listen, I, we still got time. Right we, can get, we can get him. I'm still, he's, apparently, we're still making records. I'm still making beats. He's, hey, he still wants to do the cover. He's asking, he's still oh, okay. asking me for stuff. Yeah, he's still, he's uh-huh. actually, and actually some of the stuff, the art he's shown uh-huh. me, it's really good, like really good. So I'm, I'm gonna give him the shot. All right, all right, give him the shot. Um, we gonna get a little hand drawn goat on the cover? <sighs> please don't, Elijah. Please don't. Um, but uh, yeah, I, it's weird. Like I like, it's weird. Like it's, it's this is like this is like the tear where like 
if I say I like this song, but like I hate what he's talking about, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like this is just very it's very aggressive. Very aggressive. Yeah. Oh, and South, I mean, and Southside did this. Yeah, Southside and some other people as well. Cause okay. you know, you can't just have one person produce a record anymore. No. Um, no, no, not these days. <laughs> not these days. Um but I'm sure like I'm sure one of these co-producers like ended up doing the the beat at the end for, for yeah, Dimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But like but yeah, I mean I don't really like the hook. Mm. Content aside, I just don't like the hook, but I like the beat. I like the little pocket that Drake's fine. That Drake mm-hmm. like his Drake can rap. Drake can rap. You know. He's just he's uh he's Benjamin Buttoning, right? Like he's the older he gets now it's like, oh, now he's incorporating drug use into the mix. Great. Like, it's like, right. what is going on? Like, it's, like people who, it's like people who join gangs in their like, late 20s. Like, you're 28. Why are you a blood now? Like, what are you yeah. doing? Um, yeah. You know, and, and I, the, the last thing I'm going to say about wanting sure. people to rap and like, be lyrical miracles, like when you listen to, like Kendrick is notorious for this, hmm. where like, He'll get by. Listen to a record like, um, what's the record on Mr. Morale that I really like? Savior. Yeah. He's not rapping about anything on that song. No. Nothing. Because <laughs> that song is all beat and hook. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, he's basically just kind of toying along with, toying around with flows and pockets and spaces because he wants to get you to the hook. Right. Are you happy for me? Because that's the part everybody sings along with. Um, whereas like, Drake is finding these pockets where he's kind of forced to fill them with words. Hmm. And so it's, it's so I feel like people are listening for it with that, the, the rapidy rap ear. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm good though. You good? Yeah, I'm good. All right. Go ahead. It's time. You ready? T- yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Oh. The pew 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 is hilarious. You're turning your son to a funeral. So them niggas just say they don't office. You better be talking about working in cubicles. Yeah, them boys had that lot, but I knew the code. A lot of niggas debating my numero. Not the three, not the two, I'm at you and no. Yeah. Numero, you and no. Me and Jersey, this shit like the Super Bowl. Man, this shit then it big as the. Niggas, what? Niggas, what? Niggas, what? Big as the Super Bowl, but the difference is it's just two guys playing shit that they did in the studio. Niggas usually send their verses back to me and they be terrible just like a two-year-old. I love a dinner with some fine women when they start debating about who the GOAT. I'm like, go ahead, say it then. Who the GOAT? Who the GOAT? Who the GOAT? Who the GOAT? All right, I could play this whole song. And I know I didn't even play most of Cole's part. Um, if, if, you, if you're listening to this, you've heard that record already. If you haven't, please stop with your pause this right now. Go listen to that whole song. <laughs> Clearly, this is the best song in the album for you. Oh, I don't think it's really close, is it? Yeah. I mean, you. Th- well, I'll be curious. Um, um, you know, I don't even know. Yeah. Um, probably. It's produced by Vinyls, Boy Wonder, Tay Keith. Tay Keith. A couple other people. That's a nice um, little combination. Vinyls, Boy Tay Wonder, Keith, and yeah, Boy Wonder. Yeah, I mean, Wonder. they also they also worked on um, uh, the Travis and Drake record. Um, off. See, and and when I heard this record, to me, it said Drake was like, I need one of these for myself. You know, I mean, you know how last minute this was, right? Mm-hmm. This was like the, uh, this, they did this on Thursday, right? Yeah, they did this on Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy. Crazy. It's ridiculous. Um, so there's a beat switch, of course. You would expect mm-hmm. a beat switch at this point on a record like this. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the beat. I like the second beat, but that first beat is, is ridiculous. The first, the first beat, beat is, is fantastic. Yeah. Um, Cole is feeling himself on this for sure. Yeah. Yep. And he's not even really rapping about anything profound. It's just not profane, right? Like, I mean, there's a there's a difference. <laughs> It's so new that he's responding to his verse that just dropped two weeks Last ago. Last week. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> like, yo, I don't have beef for YB. Still want to do right. a song with him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, needless to say, um, this is the internet's favorite record. For sure. This well, is the old, the old person internet's favorite record. Yeah. 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 You know, it, for Drake and Cole needed a record like this together because they only mm. have... 
they have Jodeci freestyle and they have in the morning, right? That's right. They feel like they they are completely different artists, you know, from 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 that from that point. Um, so they needed a newer record, something they could perform in front of fifteen thousand people. Um, they can run this at festivals, or they can come out during each other's sets and do this forever. Um, they needed yeah, one absolutely. of those. Yeah, yeah, Drake can't come out and do in the morning. Can't come out and do and, Jodeci freestyle. Like, I mean, they if they did record. Jodeci freestyle, I'd be like, I'd be like, yes, yeah, like, like great, but like you need one of these. Sure. So what? Da, da, they need one of these. Yeah. They need. Well, they needed anthem. a one two three jump. They needed a one two three jump. Shout Not out to quite, Kanye. It's, it's sort of a one two three jump, kind of. No, nah, it's yeah. definitely one two three jump. Yeah. yeah. They got space. One Big, two three. Ah. <laughs> In fact, yeah. the lot if you when you watch the. They already did it live, and yeah, J. Cole's jumping around on stage. Of course. Um, yeah, Cole is, Cole is, Cole is on a level. Nice. This is the fascinating thing about what streaming has done to music and the charts and everything else, that this record might go number one. Mm -hmm. This song. This song. Not a single. I mean, what is a single? But you know what I mean? Like, what not meant it? to be a commercial crossover, not trying to get played on the radio. No, no, no. It's just mm -hmm. off the strength of streaming. It says Drake and J. Cole, click that button. Click that button. It's a moment. That's it. That's it. It's a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a great song. This is, yeah, the song is ridiculous. When I first heard this song, I was just like, I was like, you got, I like, I just ran it back. I was like, you know what? It made me run it back. I can't tell you the last time, like when mm -hmm. I listen to projects for the show, I, I'll just, I'll let it, I like, let it go, let it flow. But I was like, oh no, 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 no. We are, we are, we are doing that one more time. The song is ridiculous. My only problem with this song. Oh, don't do this to me. The names of the women that he names on his third verse. Yeah, I know. They're not exactly teens. Who under the age of 45, under the age of 55, is named Claudine. Justine, Kathleen, Kathleen Charlene, yeah. Pauline, and Claudine? Who? Yeah. You know, he's just trying to do a what I these know. women want. He's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that was Brenda, Leticia. Uh, Linda, that's exactly Felicia. what he did. No, can't do that. Shout out to X. Can't do that. <laughs> oh, he told Jimmy Jam he used the Grammy as a doorstop. Oh, okay. Well, so I was like, oh, that's a hard line. And then you go read the genius annotation and you're like, wait a minute, how does he know Jimmy Jam? Because he was dating. His Jimmy Jam's then 18 year old daughter back in 2020. Drake. Come on, man. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, 